We partnered with Intel and their new Intel 670p NVMe SSD to build out a storage tacular giveaway meant for the ages of storage. Pretty snazzy intro, right? I'd say so. When Intel came to us to help celebrate the launch of the Intel 670p, we knew we had to do something crazy about how much storage was in this build. Heck, 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 heck. Even when we got done with the build, we knew we had some work to do as we put on our Beautiful Mind cosplay and got to work on figuring out how to maximize the number of PCI lanes we needed to storage calculate the crap out of this build. When the dust settled and we had unburied ourselves from the mounds of calculations, here is where we landed on the build. For the CPU, we use the Intel Core i9-10900K. It's the 10-core, 20-thread Intel 10th gen CPU. We stuck with this over the 11th gen, given the extra cores help with potential workloads that may require the storage. And the Intel 670p didn't require PCIe Gen 4. For the motherboard, we use the Asus ROG Maximus 13 Hero. And even though it's a Z590 motherboard, LGA 1200 launched with Intel 10th gen and thus was born backwards compatibility. For RAM, we use 64 gigs of Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro SL running at 3600 MHz using XMP 2.0. For the case, we use the Corsair 4000D, a return to form for Corsair and a great compact ATX tower case with good airflow. More about that later. For power, we use the reliable and overkill EVGA Supernova G5 1000. Should this individual who wins this PC need a 3090 or whatever other next gen card is on the horizon, this should have them covered. Now for storage, this will be a bit different than what you see in the build because we actually have three two terabyte 670p NVMe SSDs. One that is set up as a game drive and the other that are spanned to create a single four terabyte entity in Windows for storing media or cat memes or whatever. We also decided on a dedicated 500 gigabyte OS drive, bringing the total storage to 6.5 terabytes of unadulterated storage tacular storage. I think that sounds cool. By the way, if you want to know more about the Intel 670p series of NVMe SSDs, you should check out my overview I did right here. For cooling, we have the Corsair H100i Elite Capellix that comes with two M0120 Pro fans that we paired with an additional four others to create a slightly overpressure configuration that this PC was set up for. Finally, and not least by any stretch of the imagination, is the Asus ROG Strix RTX 3080. Now before we jump over to the live build, which you can see an uncut and raw version right here, make sure you stick around to the end because this wouldn't be a Robitech build giveaway without the thermals and benchmarks to prove it, would it? I mean, we need to know, did I build an awesome PC? Well, if you wanna know, stay tuned. But first, let's build. Here we go. Let's go ahead and start our build process. Let's grab our really ridiculous motherboard first. Let's go ahead and put our CPU in. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna go ahead and pop this out like this, lift it up, and there's our socket. What you're gonna do now is you're gonna grab this like so, and then you're gonna reach out from both sides, grab this, and just drop it down like that. We're just gonna pull this down and then watch the magic happen, guys. Watch this, it's gonna pop off. We'll see how far it goes. Oh, that wasn't that far. There you go. Now we've got our CPU installed and we're good to go. Okay, next up, let's install two of our M.2s. We're gonna install one 512 and one one terabyte. Screw these down and two of our M.2s are now installed. Now for the 64 gigs of RAM. We're gonna add our, our bits for our uh, AIO. So we're good to go there. Everything's prepped for this. Now we're gonna put this off to the side and we're gonna get ready to um, install, we're gonna get our case prepped and get our fans in and all that sort of stuff. So front panel glass, there we go. Extra stuff here. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and strip out our fans. Okay, so now all of our old ones are out. Let's go ahead and grab our ML120s. Okay, now all of our fans are in and ready to go. I'm gonna pop this down, let's get our motherboard in and go from there. 
Okay, so all of those are screwed in. What we're gonna do real quick, cause let's go ahead and hook up all our front panels and get those out of the way. Okay, so what we've hooked up now, we've got our USB 3.2 Gen 2, our USB-C front panel connection. We've got our USB 3.2, this is for the front the, the front panel here. We've got our, our front panel connections. This is our reset switch, our power switch, and then power plus and minus. And then over here, we've got our HD audio. So that's all hooked up. Next thing we're gonna do real quick is we're gonna go ahead and grab our rear ML120 fan. So we want our black EPS CPU connection. So we're gonna put that in the corner so that'll be just installed in advance. There's two EPS CPU power connectors up there and we've now got our rear fan installed. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this off to the side and get our AIO built. And there it is. Okay, so let's go ahead and flip this over, uh, get all of our cables hooked up real quick, and then we'll install our M.2s into our Gen 4 card and then get our GPU and stuff installed. And there you go, there is our full, like nice, clean, everything's in a good spot. Okay, let's get this out of the way and let's install those M.2s now. Boom, Hyper M.2 card. And there is four places for four M.2s. Oh, there we go. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and unscrew this one right here. Here is our M.2 storage. There we go. Let's get our GPU installed now. Okay, cool. Okay, so now all of that is all hooked up. Our build is finished in the front. Let's grab our PSU. Everything's clear and ready to get plugged in. It is done. The build is complete. And it looks good. It's cable managed, it looks nice. Here we go. And there it is. Okay, so the build is real, you've seen it, and you now know that things are a little bit different since we had to optimize for the current number of PCI lanes and make sure that we got the maximum number of NVMe drives we could without sacrificing performance for the other parts of the system, mainly the GPU. Trust me, it was a lot of math, but we are very smart people, or at least we pretend to be. Now, for the big question, if you were to win the PC, how does it actually perform? Well, in short, I did a good job choosing the parts, if I may say so myself. First, let's talk about the thermals. This system, as it's spec, is inside of the Corsair 4000D Airflow Edition case. It's in a slight overpressure situation with three intake and three exhaust using Corsair ML120 Pro fans. Now, if you wanna get more details on the barrage of tests and what we do to get these numbers, check out our testing methodology video right here. So for CPU thermals on our 10900K, a normally very hot CPU, we're quite cool at idle sitting in a nice and frosty 36 degrees in an open case and 40 in a closed case scenario. The tight variant is actually a good thing because it means our 4000D is doing a good job of getting air where it's needed. Now when we start to push the CPU though, with our IDA64 testing, we can see under load that things get a little bit toasty jumping to the low 80s in open air and the high 80s in the closed case scenario. Though 88 still has headroom, and we are pushing this to the max here, this CPU may benefit from an H150i cooler or even more aggressive fan curve if you wanted to do some overclocking on this rig should you win it. Now for GPU, it's a nice and cool story. 
I'd kill me. <laughs> at idle, we're looking at low 40s for our open air case and 43 in the closed case scenario, which is right on par with the 3080 temperature we saw in this case, Big Brother, the Corsair 5000D. Now for more on that, you should check out our review here on the Corsair 5000D. You will not be disappointed. Now, even though we get down to business with this card and start pumping it through our testing, the GPU reacts to it with a very nice and cool 67 in both opened and closed case scenarios, which is awesome that this case direct airflow is keeping the GPU right where we want to see it. So thermally, we're in a good place. Heck, I would say we are in a great place with headroom on both the CPU and GPU, but what about the games? I mean, does it run games? Well, fear not, because it chews up and spits out whatever game we want to put it through with these. Well, at least the ones we tested. I mean, maybe not Crisis. Let's talk about the single player RTX experiences, given this is an NVIDIA GPU paired with an Intel 10900K and an Asus ROG Strix or any other 3080 for that matter. For Tomb Raider, running at 1440p with DLSS on, the highest preset we saw an average frame rate of 151 FPS across the ones we did on the game. For Metro Exodus, also running at 1440p with ray tracing on high and DLSS set to balance, we saw an average FPS across our runs of 75. But what about the MP games? We now know how some great single player games do. Well, let's talk about those. For Apex Legends, running on low visual settings at 1440p, optimized for competitive gameplay and high frame rate, we saw an average frame rate of 259 FPS. That is more than good enough for any 240 hertz monitor. For Call of Duty Warzone, similar story, 1440p, maximized 175 FPS. That is great for any 140 or 160 hertz monitor, whichever one you decide to do. And finally, for the Fortnite fanatics out there, 1440p, low visual settings, again, setting it for competitive, you're sitting at a nice and fluid 422 FPS. Now remember, that's at 1440p, so if you were gonna drop to 1080p, uh, then these numbers would go up. But if you were gonna go up to 4K, then you would see these numbers go down. I know it seems like, you know, common sense, but you'd be surprised at people who don't, who ask that question. This would be a heck of a PC for anyone to get to take home. And hopefully that winner will be you. Now, if you're interested in entering, check down in the description below for details and your chance to walk away with this awesome storage-tacular build. Also, stay tuned as we have more giveaways just like this coming out to you very soon. I, I think, and, and for the most part, we actually almost have the monthly. So what did you think of the build? If you were gonna win it, what would be the first game you played when you got it? Let me know all of that stuff down in the comments below. Now, while you're down there, make sure you slap that subscribe button with that like button and ring that notification bell so you get a notification each and every time we post a new video right here on YouTube. And we also have a live show. You can come check it out every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday starting at 5.30 p.m., both here on YouTube and also chilling over there on Twitch. If you want to hang out with our awesome community and you have questions about PC building or tech or anything else, awesome memes, dad jokes, you name it, come check us out. Discord.gg slash Robitech. It's a great place to hang out. Over 13,000 people and growing. And finally, we also have a lot of fun stuff we do on all the social media. We're everywhere. We're uh, posting super awesome pictures over on the gram. We're making funny jokes over on the TikTok. You name it, it's all at Robitech. Anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.